I'm finessing the engine bay and uh, to that end I have riveted the big panel on there lots of little rivets there um, and another thing I've discovered is my inner wings um, which actually were more out of line than they are now um, it turns out that my inner wings I fixed on they were too far outwards um, so that meant that these rivet holes here wouldn't line up with the chassis so I've had to cut up there the uh, fiberglass that I did a few weeks ago so that I can uh, rivet the, uh, the inner wing on properly there and uh, it's also improved this piece here actually so yeah some small some small changes due to that I might end up doing the same thing on the other side um, although there's a bit of flex so I'm not sure if that's necessary but uh, yeah lots of small details uh, what else have I done? I have uh, taken the steering rack off again so that I can uh, paint it and uh, yeah there's the rack itself uh, nicely painted there and the uh, this is the uh, steering rack mounting bracket that I made that's been painted as well so that can all go back in again before long um, so the next tasks are going to be around completing the pedal box and also the connection on the inside um, the top or well, just below the scuttle to the uh, top chassis member and I think what's going to happen here is I'm actually going to weld on this extra tube uh, so that I can rivet to it without uh, having to fill in a, a gap which uh, has appeared um, so uh, not quite clear whether that was already there because when I first got the car that top tube was almost completely rusted away so uh, that's just a little bit of uncertainty hello Jessica so that's what I'm up to so next for my next uh, trick if you like I think I'll be riveting the inner wing back on in those two places and uh, finessing the, um, the pedal box most important parts of the um, filling in of the engine bay here is all this stuff here and some of it is solved by some of this um, uh, expanded PVC foam board which goes in quite nicely matches the um, the existing black fiberglass um, but other another bit is this thing here this big void here and that void here is for the brake servo which um, which goes in there, I won't put it in for demo purposes, believe me, it sits into there. And uh, as a first stage of that, I've made this paper template, um, just folded corners and fixing it together with tape. And in principle, it sits in like that. Another way of making the, the bulge in the inner arch is uh, to fold up some of this PVC foam board. So this uh, PVC foam board actually bends quite well with a with a heat gun so I've got the, uh, the curvature about right so I just need to see if I can fold the sides up maybe I'll fold the ends over first actually and then fold the sides up so I'll need a right angle bend just here so I'm gonna fold it right over here you get this kind of speckling on the surface of the board but it doesn't seem to do any damage to its uh, strength
You can feel it start to go soft quite easily. And then as it cools off, it goes hard again. I now need a bend here, this is where I start to wonder if the side's actually wide enough, but anyway, one thing at a time, so I'm going to bend it here as well now. Hmm. Not bad. It's obviously much too long, I think. The ends off. So if I cut that end, let's say about there, a rule. This is good. A knife, a steel or metal ruler. Pretty good. Same thing at this end, I think. Passive with the blade on its own was enough. Okay, so it's getting there. So now obviously I need to make some cuts to bend it inwards. Well, I don't think I can mould it inwards. Let's, um, let's see about that. So I need to make it soft first. So here's my uh, <coughs> um, infill panel, or cover panel, and here is my brake servo. And as you can see, it's a bit too small. So I'm going to have a Mark II version, and uh, just make the whole thing a bit bigger, maybe slightly neater, and see how that works out. So I'm going to bend it around this uh, paint tin, which is actually slightly too small, to be fair. Um, but uh, generally speaking, it doesn't tightly fit, so it's better than anything else I've got. So I'm going to warm up the, uh, the panel and uh, go from there. Not bad. So there we have a curve. I just need to make a similar, and it when it um, when the thing cools down, it stiffens up quite quickly, actually. So let's um, do the same thing on the other side.
or something when it's um, when it's hot. And uh, but when it's um, when it's not hot, and you try to cut a big piece, it becomes quite. Well, okay, it's not so bad, but it's a lot harder, and it sometimes splits. So, I'll just fetch my tea. Right, here's my tea, Earl Grey as usual. Now I'm going to cut slots in here while warm and start folding them in. So it will be a bigger version of this. Right, there we are. So my armadillo woodlouse pattern is fully overlapped and uh, the overall bend is just right for the brake servo to go into. Just right. And um, as it cools down, it goes hard. Um, because I can still um, manipulate the, the flanges with all these things. I can do some, for example, it's a little bit too, a little bit too far in there. So I'm going to bend that out a bit. I think the, um, the conclusion is I will fiberglass it onto the inside of the inner wing and obviously some of the fiberglass will go up the side here. Well, I'll make it go up the side there. Um, and it doesn't look... Uh, this is the inside of the inner wing, so it's not a great thing to look at. Yeah, it's just the uh, same kind of thing as this, but just a size up. And whereas this was a bit of a tight fit, this is a perfect fit. And again, don't forget that it doesn't need to um, go right in there. In fact, I think it's more on the side, something like that. So I can uh, finesse that into the inner wing, which is over there. So here we have the uh, um, phone, PVC foam board screwed into place, only screwed at the minute, one, two, three, four screws, and uh, that was pretty neat actually, doesn't it? I might uh, cut back some of the surrounding fiberglass to match that more neatly, but uh, I think that does the job. But I guess what I should always do, also do rather, is to put the pedal back in there and just check that it clears. And here it is. You can't see it. <laughs> Makes you wonder about how much fuss, as it were, that I made about making something you can't actually see at all. And here is the full setup. So we have the brake servo, the brake pedal around the back, the um, back um, moulding, which you can't see at all. Um, which I'm going to fiberglass onto the inner wing shortly. Um, got the steering shaft, even managed to get the steering wheel pretty much straight. Clutch master cylinder, 
and steering. So uh, we're getting close to a completion of this element and very shortly I shall just be sealing up the corners of the wheel arches and there's a little hole over there being left. Uh, a couple of other smallish tasks and then we should be able to be in a position of um, I don't know, putting the engine back in permanently? Surely not. Here we see the inside of the wheel arch and that's what the uh, bulge looks like and you can also see where I've had to move the joining flange there's a bit of a gap there sort of about an inch actually so that will be corrected at the same time and I shall probably laminate right over this um, to make it kind of appear as one with the rest and then when all that's done of course the screws can be taken out and uh, that'll be the end of it sort of so uh, yeah and here is the uh, completely laminated in bulge for the uh, Brooks Ovo and um, that looks pretty neat actually and the inner wing obviously is fixed into place again in the correct place I'm sure, sure there's a little bit of tidying up required in here but uh, and I've still got that back corner to sort out so that will be another project in its own right uh, not to mention down here at the back of the wheel arch yeah so I'm not not done with this yet but uh, as far as the mechanical side in the engine bay which I think is the uh, main focus um, I think that's looking pretty promising in fact the uh, existence of a bulge into the wheel arch is the same for the brake servo it's the same approach that I um, had on a Reliance scimitar that I used to own uh, SE6 um, which is a bit newer than the, some some of those um, and that again had a bulge cut out into the uh, into the arch like that I dare say there'll be a little bit of trimming and so forth but uh, that's pretty good and uh, being black is uh, also pretty good the um, fiberglass on the inside of the arch obviously makes it watertight or at least it will do when the rest of the wheel arch is watertight so that's um, that's really the objective for now I've just now got to finish off the uh, trim panels and so forth and uh, I think um, yeah that's an important stage completed there is a little, little bit more work to do in the cabin before I can truly say that uh, the bulkhead side is is fixed up but certainly from the mechanical side engine mountings steering rack brakes all of that this is pretty much it so I'm quite pleased with all that it's been a long time coming let me tell you I've been at this project now for over a year and some of this stuff must have been I can't remember when it was actually to be honest but um, it must have been around a year ago since I started fiddling around with brake servos and so on so uh, there we are see you soon <laughs>